We all want to improve our painting. And if you're saying, nah, I'm good, then you're probably lying to yourself. There's always that little thing we can't quite get right on our miniatures. And there's that person on Instagram. And we're asking ourselves, how did they do that? I want to be able to do that. But how do we get there? How do we tackle this getting better thing? It's not by chasing after these big steps that take a lot of practice and a lot of upfront investment, like finally mastering blending or being able to paint these small freehand trees that are reflecting in a perfect fish eye pattern in the armor of a miniature. All of these concepts are huge and they have all of these subsets of skills that you need. And especially if you're learning on your own, how do you even start to grasp all of these concepts? No matter what skill level we're at, we need to improve gradually and set goals that we can achieve. The closer you are to a beginner, the smaller you want to make these steps. Not only will you accomplish a goal and be happy about it, incremental steps are easier to aim for. They're ideally achievable from where you are with your skill development. Like increasing contrast by simply doing dark lining or by adding shades to these deeper areas in whatever way you feel comfortable with and whatever your skill level allows. Chances are you know one way or another to do this and always go brighter or always go darker in that case is a really manageable goal. And for today's video, I have another one of these things that you can quickly change right now and that is going to have a really big impact on how you think about miniature painting. So let's put three minutes on the clock and let's dive right into it. I said it a couple of times already, the most important thing in miniature painting is how light interacts with structures, objects, surfaces and so on. But it's often a really complex endeavor to understand all of it and it takes a lot of time to look at reference material and to understand everything and to finally put it on these small miniatures in front of us. But the good thing is all of it can be broken down into incremental steps and can be learned. What I want to talk about here is something that you're probably already doing and that you're certainly doing if you're emulating Games Workshop's painting style and how applying a very small shift to it will improve your painting instantly. Edge highlighting is something that a lot of beginners learn as a basic technique to make their miniatures look more three-dimensional instantly. It's a technique with a relatively low skill investment, especially once you learn how to hold your brush and to apply the paint properly. You get good results relatively quickly and everyone uses it, even the pros, because it's a high impact technique and it's emulating how light behaves in reality. But the problem is that eventually it seemed like a good idea to have edge highlights run around every single element with the same intensity no matter where they go. This is exactly the opposite of what I said we want to do on miniatures. Remember, we want to convey a more credible way of how light interacts with our miniatures. So what do we do? There's more or less light reflecting off of all edges. It's just the way that light works. But anything that is closer to the light source, typically the sun, which is a senator light source, or anything that is facing it is brighter. So we need to account for that and instead of running our brush all the way around every single element the same way like this, which violates the idea we just established that edges that face up would catch more light than edges facing down, we go for a more realistic highlight. Like this, where sure, edges facing down receive a highlight, but the brightest spots are reserved for anything facing up. But this is not the only thing. Light doesn't catch on the same over the whole edge either. On straight lines, the intensity eventually changes, but if it's a curved edge, this effect is even stronger. It will be a bright reflection on the apex, and you can choose the position of this apex, typically the closest spot of that area to your light source, and then it fades out. So instead of running the brush all around an area and highlight every single edge the same way, think of highlights as dynamic, catching on to some areas more than others, and try to emulate this this will look instantly more appealing because it looks familiar. So before we even start thinking about how light behaves on all of the other elements of our figure, this is a relatively simple way to make our miniatures more credible, simply because you are putting something on your miniature that we're expecting to see. If you are a beginner and you want to learn how to etch highlight properly, then this video is going to teach you everything you need to know. And if you're looking for other small but impactful things that you can change in your painting in order to improve, then this video is exactly what you need. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.